these guys with you, man. I have not played in a poker tournament since 2018. It was one of the first vlogs I ever did, and I somewhat infamously have never cashed in a multi-table tournament in my career. I think I'm like 0 for 12, somewhere in that vicinity. Could this be the first? It is the $550 mystery bounty at the Peppermill where the top 40 make the bounties. Let's see how this goes. By the way, before we get to the bounty tournament, there was an all in or fold tournament earlier this week as part of the Peppermill Poker Palooza. I just love the concept because of how fun it sounds. I couldn't play in it due to lack of childcare, but our boy Bugsy did. And his attempt to win with the Robbie ultimately was successful. See what we got this time. You want to see what I got? Oh, there's a name for that hand. <laughs> By the way, I'd love to see some sort of a push fold chart created for an all inner fold tournament. I don't know what that would look like, but it would be interesting. So for this one, after a few announcements by poker director Mike Nelson, cards were in the air just after noon in the Capri Ballroom with a little under 200 players, starting with 20,000 in tournament chips. I start off by utilizing this phone holder for tournament vlogging as I just didn't have enough physical chips to support a phone. With blinds at 1 and 100 with a 100 big blind ante, the first hand of note comes when I open ace queen of hearts to 300 and the big blind defense. So with 800 in, a flop is queen six deuce with a couple of clubs and the big blind checks. I bet 500 here. He thinks about it for a second before calling. And with 1800 in, the turn is an offsuit eight, and he checks again. This time I bet a thousand, and this time he thinks about it again and mucks. There was a lot more limping at this table than I would have expected, and with blinds at one and 200, with the 200 big blind ante, I attempt my first pre flop squeeze on the day. My raise to 800 with king 10 of hearts over two limpers results in zero folding, and I just shut it down when I hit nothing. That was followed up by a hand in which I got dealt the queen 10 of clubs, and my c-bet was successful when I flopped two over cards and a gut shot straight draw. Next hand folds around to me in the small blind six-handed, and I have king 8 of hearts and make it 500. Big blind calls, and with 1,200 in, the flop would be a good one, coming 8-8-3 rainbow giving me trips. In an attempt to build a pot against small pocket pairs, I just bet 300 here, and I end up getting called. With 1,800 in, the turn is the seven of hearts. This time I bet 800, which is when I finally remember to hit the record button on my phone. And sure enough, she thinks about it for a minute and calls. So with 3,400 in, the river is the ace of diamonds. Figuring the most likely thing was for her to have something like sixes or nines or tens here, I decide to bet out 1,500 hoping she'll bluff catch. And she clearly doesn't love the idea of paying me off, but opts to do it anyway. Creating a 6,400 chip pot, I show, and she mucks. I then pick up pocket aces in the hijack and make it 600. The button three bets me to 1,500, which I didn't hate. Folds back to me, and I opt to four bet it here to a tune of 3,500 chips. He thinks about it for a second before jamming all in for about 10,000 more, which that, I must say, I also didn't hate. He has pocket queens here, which I got to look at immediately because that is one of the great things about playing tournament poker. You show the cards during all-in situations. I feel that's the way it should always be. And let's check the run out. So, aces hold, and we are off to a hot start in this mystery bounty tournament. All right, Mike's all in. Ace king. Ace queen. We know me. It's coming for sure? It is. We know, we know what's happening. All right. Oh, wow. How do you win with that hand? I never do. All practice. 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 We talking about practice, practice, man. Not the game. Practice. We talking about practice. With blinds out, 100 and 300. With a 300 big blind ante, I raise ace queen and didn't flop anything, but bluffed anyway and got called. And then I turned an ace, which of course I'm gonna bet. I then get raised to 4,000 chips here. Now this has become a key Ben Deitch vlog concept if there is such a thing. When you bluff the flop, 
get called and turn an ace or something along those lines when it comes to top pair and still get raised, good luck ever having one pair be good. I fold the hand and move on. All right, doing this Daniel Negreanu style first break, 2,900 in chips. Ended up losing back about 4,500 or so with the King High plus draw on a hand that uh, the guy Mike, who you saw, ended up losing most of his stack on when he had aces jammed all in on a jack high flop. The guy called with a pair of jacks and an eight kicker, and the eight came on the turn. So but worse for Mike than it did for me. Still above average though, in break one, mystery bounty, Peppermill Reno, Peppermill Poker Palooza 2022. I then get a raise in with the 5-6 of clubs playing five-handed, and I see bet an ace-6-3 board and took that one down as well. I then realized that I can get video that you're accustomed to on this vlog just by using the phone holder in this fashion. With blinds at 200-400 with a 400 ante, I have king-queen and raised to 1100 plus one and end up heads up against the big blind who calls. With 2800 in the pot, the flop is king-queen-9-2 clubs giving me top two. Big blind checks. I bet 1500 here, and he check calls. So with 5800 in the turn is the jack of hearts. Obviously the last card in the deck I wanted to see just about, so I check back, knowing that I'm going to have to call down on a lot of rivers. That card comes the deuce of hearts, which is definitely one of those I feel. He bets 2600 and as I planned, I pay him off, creating an 11,000 chip pot, and he shows... Queen 10 offsuit for the turn four outer. Had to figure the early run good would wear off, and in that hand, it certainly did. We did get a hand where I had pocket eights in the big blind and was going to call an all in, but another player jammed all in as well, forcing me out. Ended up being ace king against ace queen, which certainly wouldn't have been a bad spot to be all in with eights, but they would have ended up in third place had I called. I then three bet pocket queens. Only my second 3-bet of the day, but I still got action and route to an ace-high flop and ended up getting bluffed off the queens by a guy who had called that 3-bet with 9-4 of diamonds. So, that was unfortunate for me, and after flopping top pair in a straight draw against a made straight, I'd lose about 4,000 more chips. I then open ace-10 on the button, and despite flopping nothing, I'd turn the nut flush drop. I'd bet, said draw, and get called only to completely brick the river and lose to a pair of nines, which is exactly what I figured I was up against. The familiar face of Reno Grinder. Per usual, he has chips. Not the same as me. All right. So I'm back down to starting stack, level eight, blinds at 500 1,000 with a 1,000 chip ante. Our table breaks, and with just over 12 big blinds, I get moved to another table where I would quickly be in shove mode. I lost a couple of small pots early and got blinded down to under the 12 big blinds, and then I pick up ace-jack, and I have the ability to 3-bet jam the initial opener, who actually had a decision in this all right, hand. Going all in. It was clear that I currently have the best hand, as every better hand in the deck snap calls me here. But... He thinks about it for a long time, which actually surprised me, and finally calls with the exact hand I thought I was going to see, king-queen offsuit. So, we're all in with the best hand, but it's not the best hand by much. Let's see how this run out goes. Alright, so you saw it. That's how it ends. There's two things in my life that I try not to do. Golf and tournament poker. Because it seems like every time I do either one of those things, I just end up wasting an entire day to achieve nothing and get aggravated. And that's kind of what's happened here. Back to cash it is. All right.
right, it is the Friday night of the Peppermill Poker Palooza, likely one of the busiest nights of the year for Reno Poker. I am not playing any more tournament poker, but rather hosting the first ever meetup game here at the Peppermill. Viewers from the vlog taking part in it should be fun. Let's see how it goes. All right, Kayla, first of all, Kayla's here. All right, I think everyone would want to see that. Over here, we got Jasper, he's a local. We got James, he's an actual professor, not the professor, but an actual professor. Dave B is in the house, Dave B, ladies and gentlemen, nice hat, nice freaking hat. We got Dan San Francisco, we got Chung from LA, and we got Doug from Utah. First ever meetup game to go along with Chenny, who's dealing, she's a self-described traditional Chinese girl. <laughs> Self-described. And then over here, last and definitely least, <laughs> Mr. C himself, a.k.a. Sharky, a.k.a. Slick. Now, the, 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 you're the man of many nicknames, and I think Slick is my favorite. And it always reminds me of this movie clip right here. <laughs> the Slack fucking Saigon! Hey, Slick! I was in junior high, dickhead. The game actually starts with quads being made on the very first deal. Can't say I've seen that too many times throughout my career. But the first hand for me comes when we get an early position limp. And I have the premium holding of four deuce of clubs on the button in the straddle. And after James, the actual professor, checks in the big blind, I check as well. And with 30 in, the flop comes 9-3-4 with a couple of clubs giving me a pair and a flush draw. He leads out for 15, and it folds to me, and I decide to raise it to 55 here. He thinks about it for a minute and makes the call. So with 140 in, the turn is an offsuit ace. He checks, and I decide ultimately on bluffing $125 here. He thinks about it for a minute and does not relinquish. So with 390 in, the river is another ace. Terrible card to bluff him off a nine, which he's well aware of. So he checks, and I just check it back here, and he shows the nine deuce, which is obviously good enough to win. We get a limp from the hijack, and a call on the button from Mr. C, a.k.a. Slick, and I have ace king of diamonds in the big blind and make it 50, and neither of these guys has gone anywhere. So with 150 in, the flop is 643 rainbow with one diamond. I'm first to act, and don't just want to give up on this with two over cards and the backdoor nut flush draw, so... I bet 115 here. The hijack opts to call this bet with the button going out. So with 380 in, the turn is the ace of spades. Now, with the value hand, I'm obviously going to keep betting. I'm making $145 here. The hijack thinks about it for a second before raising to 400. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When you bluff the flop with a hand like ace king, hit the turn, bet it, and still get raised one pair is just never good. So I only think about it for a minute before laying the hand down, and he shows pocket threes for a slow played flopped set. We get a cameo from our main event seat winner, James Stevenson from San Diego. He doesn't get into the meetup game, but he stopped in on his way to the tournament, and Slick opens in the low jack to 75. I have 10 9 of clubs in the high jack and make the call. Jasper squeezes the 375 from the cutoff, and that results in Slick going out, and obviously me as well. Then James and Slick get into a hand where James raised dark pre-flop, and by the time we got to the river, Slick was so convinced that James was airballing that he showed just ace high and called the bet, and James won yet another hand with nine deuce. Wow. I have two pair of nine deuces. Such an asshole. <laughs> Nine deuce. <laughs> then I get a couple of calls after raising ace 10 and getting a queen jack eight flop. I bet 50 into a pot of 80 and immediately get raised to 150, creating a heads up pot. With a double belly buster, I elect to make this call, as I'm assuming all of you would. And with 380 in, the turn is a king. I only have 275 left here after donating in the hands that you saw, plus a few small ones that you didn't. So, I jam all in here and get snap called. So, we have a $930 pot, and he has a set of eights. So, if I can avoid a board pair on the river, I will double up and be back in this game. If I can't, I'll be rebuying, and we get a clean river. So, 
We are just about back to our initial buy-in here in this meetup game. This is a mid-session update. The player known as Slick has informed me that he does not date Asian women. I find this to be an atrocious life decision. This is the end of the update. We didn't get a limp fest, and I'm in the straddle with Queen Jack of Hearts. Figured it was a good time for a squeeze here, so I'll make it 75. Apparently, I didn't squeeze hard enough, as three guys make the call. So with 310 in, the flop is ace-king-4 with a couple of hearts. So with the king of diamonds, I don't have enough flush draw here, but do have a Broadway draw along with hearts. So I bet another $75 here. The button makes it 250 and it folds back around to me. I thought this was kind of a close spot as to whether it was actually worth continuing or not. I definitely felt that it would be pretty nitty of me just to give this hand up here on the flop. Ultimately, that's what I decided on, that I should see this turn. So, with 810 in, the turn is an offsuit 7 and I check. To my amazement, he checks it back here and the river is a deuce, so I brick out. I didn't see what hand he'd raise flop with that he'd now fold. So I just decided to give up, and it was a good thing that I missed my flush as he shows king six of hearts and takes it down with a pair of kings. If I hadn't proved this was a meetup game by the way I play, I will here. We get an under the gun straddle, and I am in the plus one position with the Octo Crab. Now, naturally, I got a raise here. Everyone knows this hand from this vlog, so I got to get it in action on a meetup game. I make it 60, and it folds back around to the straddle who makes the call. So with 125 in, the flop is 8-3-4, giving me top and bottom pair. Under the gun, bets out for 75, and I opt for the min raise here. I'm assuming if he has an 8, he'll likely put me all in for my last 500 or so. But he shows ace five and throws it in the muck. You're betting into me with nothing. I, I, I was on a move with the octo crab and I got oh, Either way, that may be a first with me raising the octo crab and flopping a big hand and winning it. Because normally, as you know from years on this vlog, I can't win with that hand and I can't beat it. It's a bad combination. We then see a queens versus jacks cooler. A pretty big pot. And we see Slick taking a shot at a sports bet in a way that I would not recommend. We saw some more bluffs with the Octo Crab, but I went so card dead that it was ridiculous. I even gave some action with the King 8 of Hearts, which was not a good idea. So I was bleeding chips down almost a thousand on the day at this point, despite the small double up earlier. I go completely card dead yet again for the next 90 minutes. We do see the Phillies take game one of the World Series, an event that if you ask me, it's just not as good without Joe Buck calling it. We saw some monster pots after that, including the biggest one of the day, when a set of tens took down pocket aces. The clock struck midnight, and as I've said before, I'll say it again, my policy is I only play later than midnight if the game is so good it's ridiculous. And while this was a good game, I'm not going to put it in that category. So even though I was the guy hosting the meetup game... I left at midnight, and I was ultimately later told the game would go on for another hour without me, which I thought was kind of cool. I'd rack up and book the loss. Kayla's making one last appearance. What did you do today, Benjamin? I donated. You donated? Because I'm a nice guy. You are the nicest. See, it's, it's like finally been said. It's special events. Exactly. If I'm going to put on a meetup game, I should lose in the game, and <laughs> damn it, I pulled that off. You pulled it off so great. Exactly. All right, cashing out, booking almost exactly a $300 loss. So, you know, my goal was to kind of get in there and 
splash around a bit, if you will. I actually ended up playing the Queen of Five of Diamonds in one hand. And this is going to shock you. But I didn't win. I actually ended up flopping a pair of fives on a spot where I thought that was going to win. Ended up being up against pocket eights and losing. Anyway, so note to self, do not play the Queen Five, even in a meetup game, perhaps. That'll do it for us. Like, subscribe, and comment, and we will see you back here next time.